Hey, praise the Lord, it is I, Brother Clinton, once again. Welcome back to the Word Prophet channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth as our Lord Jesus Christ commanded. A young brother wrote to me today and he asked me a specific question about Christian baptism. And although I have made a video about this in time past, the camera and the microphone quality were not that great at the time, and so I thought I would just make a new video speaking about these things. It's a very simple subject and it won't take long at all. Praise the Lord. So what is Christian baptism and how do Christians baptize? Well, the Bible says that after our Lord Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, that he appeared unto his disciples for 40 days after his resurrection. And then he appointed them to meet with him at a certain place that he had appointed beforehand and they met with him and he said unto them and this is written in matthew chapter 28 verses 18 through 20 he said unto them all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even unto the end of the world Amen. And then he ascended into heaven. And ten days later, the New Testament began. As his disciples were waiting in Jerusalem, as he has commanded them, as, pardon me, as he had commanded them, the Holy Ghost fell upon all of them, and they began to speak with other tongues and prophesy, according to the scripture, and I'm quoting to you from the second chapter of the book of Acts. And so, when the New Testament began, the apostles whom he had chosen and to whom he had given the previous commandment in Matthew chapter 28, ten days earlier, they began to preach, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all those that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That was the beginning of the New Testament. And so... Jesus had commanded his disciples to go into all the nations and make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And that's what they did. They began to preach ten days later when the New Testament began, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. So that's how Christians baptize, according to the commandment of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was also echoed by the commandment of his apostles whom he had commanded. And so when we baptize someone, we take them into the water and we tell them, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And then we dunk them under the water. Okay, That's what the scripture says. We baptize them in the name of Jesus Christ. Now what does a person need to believe in order to be baptized? Well, of course a person needs to believe the gospel in order to be baptized because Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So what does a person have to believe in order to be baptized? Well, a person has to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that he laid down his life for the sins of the world, and was risen from the dead incorruptible by the power of God, and that he has ascended into heaven, and that through his name we can receive remission of sins. Remission of sins is a phrase that means when your sins are washed away, or pardoned, or forgiven. And the way that we receive remission of sins is to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Repent means to turn from your evil ways and start doing that which is good and right. It's literally a word that means to change the direction that you're going. To repent means if you're going one way, you turn around and go the other way. That's what repent means. If you're going to do something and you repent, then that means that you change your mind and you decide not to do that thing and you do something else instead. We can see the word repent all through the scripture and, and that's clearly what it means. It means to not do what you were going to do and do something else instead. And so that's what repent means. And the Bible says that we are to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. The blood of Jesus Christ our Lord was shed for the remission of sins. This is what Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. And it's written in many other places as well, of course. So, as a Christian, I baptize people according to the commandment of my Lord Jesus Christ, because as a Christian, I'm a disciple of Christ. And so when I preach the gospel to somebody, 
and they believe the gospel, the gospel being the good news of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fact that we can be forgiven of our sins through his name, and somebody believes that gospel, then I take them to some water, whatever water it is, could be a swimming pool, could be a lake, could be an ocean, could be a river, as long as it's enough water to bury the person under the water, because we are buried with Christ in baptism, as the scripture says. And so I take them to the water, and I will tell them, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. Then I dunk them under the water. I might say, I'm, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Okay? Or I might not say for the remission of sins. It doesn't really matter because it's for the remission of sins whether I say it's for the remission of sins or not. Because the Bible says that baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is for the remission of sins. So when I'm baptizing someone, I'm there for two reasons. I'm there to dunk them under the water, to submerge them completely under the water, and to call upon the name of the Lord for that person. Because it is written, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And since the person can't call upon the name of the Lord when he's under the water, then I call upon the name of the Lord for that person. That's why I'm the baptizer. That's my purpose as the baptizer. To baptize them in the name of the Lord. See, as Ananias said to Paul, And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So this is how we call upon the name of the Lord to be saved from our sins. We repent and are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So this is how Christians baptize people. It's very simple. It's not a sacrament. It's not an ordinance. It's not a liturgy. It's, it's not a, you know, a thing that we have to practice and rehearse and all that stuff. It's really very simple. We preach the gospel to people, and if they believe it, then we baptize them in the name of Jesus Christ. This is what our Lord Jesus Christ commanded. This is what his apostles understood and began to command after his resurrection. And this is what we as Christians do who abide in the apostles' doctrine. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen.